Hey everybody, welcome to the other side of the homestead. So we're in the kitchen and today I have G with me. Uh, he was watching a video about making your own dog food. Yes, you don't have to go to the grocery store. You do not have to go to the feed store to get your dog food. Uh, he's got the preparations figured out. And what did you decide for every 35 pounds it was? Oh, you need about 40 grams of protein for a 100 pound dog. Okay. 40 to 50 grams. So we have the German Shepherd, and you've seen Manny running around. If you haven't, you will soon. And so he weighs about 100 pounds. He's a really big boy. But we also have Gizmo, and Gizmo probably weighs a buck, I don't know. Four pounds soaking wet. Is it four pounds soaking wet? Somewhere in there. She's a little miniature dog. Uh, we got her. Thanks, Ange. <laughs> so we got her through a friend. Uh, anyway... Uh, she's been great and then we have the cat so we actually have everybody on the same diet and what we do because we have so many chickens we're getting about how many dozen eggs would you say a day about a dozen and a half a dozen and a half that's actually going to pick up in september because now we've added we've hatched out 30 some odd and i think we've got 30 more down there um so those are coming on and basically he was watching a video that showed you how to make dog food and what needed to happen he did a little bit of research to figure out how many grams of protein per pound that you need to have and so we think we've got that figured out we actually tried it uh, at the beginning of the weekend of last week somewhere in there and it actually worked out really great and the dogs <laughs> Manny was actually pushing his bowl around the kitchen trying to figure out if there was anything left looking in there not unusual for a german shepherd but just kind of funny so gizmo was trying to eat the cat's food and oh it's a whole ordeal it always is around here so what we're going to do garen's going to go ahead and show you exactly how to put this together now the garden we're late june and so all of that lettuce as we got the warm weather that lettuce started to wilt go to seed so the idea is is that we go ahead and we pull the seeds from there now at this point the rain has been off and on this last week I gotta admit I haven't really been getting the seeds from there but that's okay because I have plenty put away in the vault so he went to the garden and he was actually able to get this and so we are not advertising for anybody but so we were able to get one of those little shopping carts that you uh, carry around with you and filled that up with greens so we're gonna add that to about a dozen eggs you're going to be shocked the way that it's done you want to make sure that you're actually grinding the shell because they get the shell too then he's going to cook it up and maybe he'll get a shot of the dogs pushing their bulls around and fighting each other <clears throat> excuse Probably. me so we'll see what happens here he's going to go ahead and take over and he'll show you step by step how to do it all and i think that's probably about it yep, that's i just about it. get the show on the road all right all right First thing, we're, first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna take the eggs, stick them in a food processor, and blend them shells and all. You don't even have to crack them. Now we've got some turkey and duck eggs in here too. Um, the reason why we've got so many is just basically because we can't get people to, to buy the turkey and duck eggs for some reason. And the extra chicken eggs, I mean, we get so many, we can't sell them quick enough. You know, and I, I, I can't blame anybody. I can't blame anybody. Whenever you're paying 69 cents a dozen in the grocery store, but you know the the quality of those eggs. If you take a fresh farm egg and stick it next to one of those store bought eggs, you can literally see the the difference in the quality of the egg. So what we've done, we just take the eggs and stick them in there. Turn it on. And we'll we'll go ahead and pulse it. Now our, our pot, or our, I'm sorry, our pan isn't that big. So we're not going to be able to do all these in one setting. So we'll just pulse on those and then we'll take a little bit, a little bit of this lettuce. And I'm just going to use the stalks and all. I mean, we can, we can grind them up and it'll be perfectly fine. So we will just stick that in there. let that go now I got everything mixed up and I put it in our, our pan Now I used a little bit of canola oil on it to keep it from sticking but even though this is a non-stick I, 
I just want to make sure that nothing sticks to it. And we're just going to let that cook. And we want to stir it. We want to make sure it's not burning. And while that's going, I'll take a little bit more lettuce and another dozen eggs. Okay, we're back. So our first batch is almost done, and we've cooked it so the eggs are pretty dry. We found that the drier the eggs are, the longer they, they, they stay in the refrigerator. Um, you can get a batch like this to last a couple of days, and by that time it's, it's gone. So what we'll do is we'll take it and put it in a separate pot, or a second, second pan, just so it it can cool off and we can cook the second one, the second batch. Now we've got a little bit of milk here left over from milking the goat and it's about ready to go bad. It hasn't gone sour yet but it's almost there. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour it in here and, and cook it with this batch of eggs. Now you need to be careful whenever you're feeding your dogs any kind, anything with milk in it because like people some dogs can be lactose intolerant and it will give them rumbly gut. But we've, we've fed our dogs enough that we know that, that they're perfectly fine with milk and eggs and such. So we'll go ahead and we'll start cooking this second batch and while that's going I'll get some more eggs in the processor. You know one of the tenets in per permaculture is that nothing goes to waste. You always always want to use everything. So that's what's great about this recipe. You know if we can't eat or sell the eggs and all the veggies out of the garden we can cook them up and mix them together and make this recipe for the dogs. And we can stick in the refrigerator. You know, if we make a big batch, we want to sit, do it over four or five days. We can. And if the dogs can't eat all those eggs before they start going bad, we can take them out and feed them to the pigs. Pigs will eat it, turn into food that way whenever we go to butcher the pigs. So it's just a, it's a fantastic way of, of, of making sure that no, nothing goes to waste. You know, and another good thing about this recipe is it's super simple to do. It can be done any place. You can cook over a campfire. You can cook it on an outside grill. You cook it on the stove like we are. You know, there may come a time when we're in austere settings and we can't get to the grocery store or the feed store to get dog food for the animals. You know, so we have to come up with other ways to, to do it. And this is a fantastic way to fortify ourselves against something like that happening in our lives. You know, we've got the resources here on, on the homestead and we're able to use it. So our last batch of eggs went into the pan. I'm going to throw you under the bus for a second. I know why she did the introduction and walked off. This can be kind of tedious um, and it's it's rather hot. You know, but knowing what it's for, I, I think I can survive. I just realized at the beginning of the video I said a hundred pound dog would need 40 grams of protein. I was wrong. That's closer to 70 or 80 grams, which equates to about 10 to 12 medium to large size eggs. Um, we figure on Manny's size, it's going to be about four cups of these eggs with the veggies and everything in it will equal, equal the amount of protein that he needs. And we've got to call out to one of our veterinarian friends um, to verify that we're, we're giving Manny an enough to eat or, or not feeding him too much. Uh, but I, if my calculations are right, it should be about four cups of, of eggs. And so that means this eight, eight, dozen, uh, eight dozen eggs will last about, about a week, week to nine days, somewhere around there. 
you know, doing it once a week. You can you can do this as a weekend project and cook up enough dog food for the entire week for your dog. Well, depending on how many you have, of course. Uh, with ours, with ours, it'll it'll last about a week to nine days. All right, so we got all eight dozen eggs cooked. We're gonna let this cool down. Let me show you what they look like. So there's what we got. The batch in the pan is going to cool down. And this batch in this bowl is cool enough. I'm going to go ahead and feed the dogs. Actually, I've already given Gizmo hers and she wolfed hers down. I don't even think she tasted it. But let's go ahead and see if, if Manny likes it. So Manny gets four cups. Gizmo gets about a little less than a quarter of a cup. And like I said, this batch of eggs should last us, oh, about a week to nine days. Three and four. Let's go see how he likes it. Come on, Manny, you want to eat? Oh. No. Hey, he doesn't like Gizmo being around his food while he's eating. Well. Unfortunately, I was not able to get any video of Manny finishing his bowl and chasing it around the kitchen. I had to, had to scoot Gizmo out of the way, and by the time I was done, he had finished his bowl and was on to other things. So, I'm going to say it was a big success. And this batch, what we'll do is we'll put a lid on the metal bowl, and we'll put it down in the processing kitchen. And we'll keep a smaller bowl up here, and we'll, we'll feed them on a daily basis from that, and refill it as we need to. And like I said, this batch will last us a, w a week to nine days. Um, since it looks like this is going to be something we do on a regular basis, what we'll probably go get is a two to three gallon uh, food grade bucket, and that's what we'll keep down in the processing kitchen. That way we can make a big batch all at one time, and we don't have to be doing this three or four times a week. Um, so if you haven't hit the subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Give us a big thumbs up. Let the video platform know that you like us. Go ahead and leave us a comment. Let us, let us know if there's anything we can add or subtract from the recipe or anything that we're missing that will keep the dogs healthier. And share this video out with somebody that you think might find it entertaining or educational. Well, we're done for today. One last thing. Live a life done free. Grumpy G clear. Thanks, Milo.